I've come to a place that's world famous for being a party town. But I'm going beyond the glitz and the glamour to try and uncover reports of a notorious underworld. All I do is kill, that's all I know how to do. Scary <laughs> mother This is a place where nearly half the males arrested have traces of cocaine in their system. 5,894 grams of cocaine. And some parts of town have seen a 40% rise in the murder rate. Are each of you prepared to kill? Prepared to kill. I'm in Miami. USA, one of the world's toughest towns. postcard tourist destination, famed for its beaches and its nightlife, a mecca for entertainment with a personality to match. Scratch the surface of Miami's glitz and glamour, and it reveals a much darker picture. You'll never have a club where nobody's uh, doing drugs. It, it's not possible. Anyone that's looking for drugs in South Beach can find the drugs. Over the last 18 months, there's been an upsurge in gang violence, giving Miami a higher murder rate than New York and LA. I'm here to find out why. That is a spectacular sight. That's Miami, that's the Miami that we all know from Miami Vice. And you talk to the, the uh, old guard, the old cops, who ran the beat then, and they say that uh, an awful lot of what you see here, the shiny buildings, the great condos, an awful lot of that, more than anybody really wants to admit, um, was built on drug money. I'm on my way to meet someone who knows all about how this city's drug trade operates. A man who single-handedly built an empire from the profits of cocaine. John Roberts was once one of the biggest importers of cocaine in American history. In the 1980s, he imported approximately $20 billion worth of drugs. Would it be true to say that a lot of the Miami that we see, the glitz and the glamour, the tourist side of Miami, the beach, was built? On cocaine. I would say. And on, on 80, your business. 80 to 90% of it was built on cocaine. When I came down here and I used to go to what's now called South Beach, there was nothing but lines of old people and rockers just sitting there waiting to die, you know what I mean? Until God or whoever controls whatever it is, say your turn to die, they'd die and the next old person would get in the chair and they'd rock back and forth. So this town was, it's fair to say, was built on cocaine. I, I would like somebody to, you know, argue the other side and tell me how else it was built, because there's no other way. There was no, there was no industry in Miami back then. You look back then, you didn't have what you have now. There was no industry. There was nothing back then. Miami was, Miami was the South. Miami wasn't far from Mississippi. You know, it was real, really the southern, southern rednecks back then. Paint a picture of the lifestyle that um, this incredible, huge, incredible billion dollar business gave you. Mm -hmm. There was nothing you couldn't do or you couldn't buy. We used to eat in a restaurant called The Forge. What we had was our own room. I'd go in there with my friends, we'd get fucked up, excuse my English, drunk, destroy the room, throw drinks against the wall, have parties with girls on the table and under the table, destroy the place, they'd send me the bill the next day, they'd fix the room and I'd come back a week later. We did it every week. But the good times and easy money didn't come without its fair share of extreme violence. Cocaine, everybody's nervous, everybody's uptight, everybody's looking at everybody strange. The people I was involved with, unfortunately Rafa, he, he would take a mound of coke, he'd pile it on the table, and he'd have one of his guys empty the cigarettes out, and he would load it back. So this man was a paranoid schizophrenic. I mean, you could be sitting at dinner, and the table next to you would look at you, he'd decide to kill the whole table. And I'm not exaggerating, that's how paranoid the man was. And next thing you knew, they'd be, he'd be shooting everybody at the table next to you, and you'd be going out the door, you know what I mean? You didn't know what was gonna happen. Undercover of the night. As cocaine became big business, so did the violence as Colombian drug dealers, high on their own supply, 
shot each other up on the streets of the city. This was the era of the cocaine cowboys and it made Miami the murder capital of America. But in the 21st century, there are new rules of engagement in Miami's drug trade, turning parts of the town into a war zone. You take me here, you see this here? You live by it, you're gonna die by it. I don't need my child living and dying by this. I tell you what, you figure it out. After New York and LA, Miami is the most popular American tourist destination. Not bad for a city that arose from a swampy flatland a little more than a hundred years ago. Miami owes its very existence to the illicit trade in cocaine, a trade whose workforce has been fueled by the flow of immigrants into the city. In the past 50 years, wave after wave of migrants have flooded this city, all looking for an opportunity to flourish. In 1980, Fidel Castro tricked the US into admitting hundreds of Cuba's most violent criminals. Before the authorities knew it was going on, Miami's crime rate soared. This was the era immortalized in the film Scarface. After the Cubans came the Jamaicans, who fought deadly battles with the Cuban gangs for control of the city's drug market. The latest wave of migrants, the Haitians, are now major players in Miami's drug trade. I'm with John Roberts, once the largest cocaine importer in American history. I'm interested in his views on Haiti's involvement with today's cocaine trade. It's rampant there now, it's rampant. Now there's murders because somebody looks the wrong way or something, you know, it's just stupid out there now. What's interesting is when the Haitians came over here, the black African-Americans, they hated them. Oh, that, Abs you know, Abs uh, cor a hundred percent correct. The Haitians became like what the Jamaicans used to be. Now the Haitians have taken over. Because their capacity for violence is, is greater much than anybody greater, else's. Yes, and they have much more force. There's not that many Jamaicans here compared to Haitians. In numbers alone, they outnumber them. So that, that's why the Haitians have pushed them out. In Miami's drug trade, John was a major player, but he wasn't selling the drugs on the street. That was left to the gangs to sort out, whose rule is the barrel of a gun. And the ones with the most guns right now and a willingness to use them are a Haitian gang known as the Zopound, which roughly translates as Haitian to the bone. Their notoriety has spanned nearly two decades. I've heard stories of extreme brutality, street executions, and voodoo rituals. They reside in the suburb, which has become known as Little Haiti, about a 10-minute drive from the tourist areas of South Beach. Even though most visitors to Miami wouldn't dream of going to this neighborhood, cocaine has an inescapable presence in this city. It was discovered that 78% of all dollar bills from Miami contain traces of cocaine, the highest in the entire country. I'm with the city of Miami police, and I'm with their gang unit, specialist gang unit, and they're going to take me a tour of the city's gangland hotspots. They're also going to take me to Little Haiti, and they're giving me a little insight as to where Zopound fit into a matrix of gangland violence in this, the city of exiles. What strikes me almost immediately is just within a few blocks, we leave the glitzy skyscrapers of downtown Miami and enter a whole different world. It's still daytime, but there's a palpable sense of tension on these streets. This is the kind of New York version of the projects around here. Yeah, this here, yeah, this is the project right here. A lot of narcotics, a lot of guns in this area, a lot of drive-by shootings up here. I'm right here in Little Haiti. What's the, what's a weapon of choice? among uh, the gangs here and the drug dealers and Zopound. The AK-47, which the uh, street name for it here is a chopper. We're on the outskirts of Little Haiti and it feels like anything can happen at any moment. Camera here. Sure enough, two streets away, a drug dealer is about to have a surprise visit.
full of marijuana and cocaine. All that for weed, G? All this for a little bit of weed. See you right there, bro? Marijuana. These simultaneous incidents show that, no matter how big or small the quantity, Miami Police Force has a zero tolerance when it comes to drugs. When people talk to us about uh, Zopound, I got a sense that they were created, you know, from, a, from different DNA, different ingredients to other gangs. The crimes they committed were, you know, heinous. They were really, really, really bad compared to a normal type of uh, crime we were used to seeing as far as the gang aspect goes of it. Was it the sense that when the Zopan started kind of organizing, was there a sense that they were quicker to pull the trigger than anyone else? I mean, what was it about their crimes that set them apart? It just letting you know they're ruthless. Yeah. You know, that, that's, that's their nature. Um, for what reason, I don't know, but, you know, they're just, they are, you know, a step above I mean, the like other, the other individuals. Right, 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 right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Uh -huh. uh, don't get up. They're walking away, Kevin. They're gonna run, Kevin. To me, these guys look like a bunch of kids hanging out after school, but I'm informed they are in fact affiliated to another local street gang, Prey 5. And the gang unit aren't about to take any chances. Split your shit on camera. What's wrong with you, motherfucker? Fucking put your hands anywhere I can't see them again. The police inform me that this girl, Jennifer, was a target of a drive-by shooting only last week. <laughs> so what happened? So did, 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 was there a shooting? They were just shooting at us. Yeah, and, and why do you think they were shooting at you? I don't even know. Who would want to shoot at you guys? I don't know. Punks. Yeah. Punks that don't got no lives. Are you guys at school? You at school? Yeah? Yeah, we go to school. Stay in school. Yeah, and, what, and, uh, and how old are you? Me? Yeah. 15. 15. This is CCTV footage of Jennifer and the actual drive-by shooting. Even though the bullets went through the window of a local library, no one was injured. The police investigation revealed Jennifer was selling drugs on someone else's turf. In these parts of Miami, that's a crime punishable by death. What do you want to do? Who do you want to be when you grow up? Graphic designer. Graphic designer? Yes. Yeah? I love drawing. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think I'm gonna make it there. All the records I got. Too much felony, sir. Well, too many drive-bys. You're definitely not gonna make it. Man, I hope I end up getting killed one day. Why? I don't like this world. This world getting too hard for me, for real. It's too rough out here. It's amazing, a one-to-one, -one, you know, they're, they're just kids, you know, but, you know, you talk to the officers here and, you know, their records, they're something of drive-by shootings, drug deals, and you think, they're 15, what future do they have? Teenagers like Jennifer are being sucked into gang life with little prospects of ever getting out. It seems the gangs have a strong grip on the city. I'm on my way to meet one of Miami's top crime journalists, Frank Alvarado, to find out more about the influence of Zo Pound, the newest and deadliest gang in the city. My understanding is, is that Zo Pound um, like a lot, some of the other gangs, they started really coming over like after 92, after the military coup in Haiti, forced the max exodus of Haitians over, you know, here to Miami. And I guess shortly after, like, they arrived here, Zopown, through fear and intimidation, they were just taking over the streets of Little Haiti. And it's not unusual you know, when, when the police show up to a homicide scene to find 50 casings on the floor because they're, the modus operandi behind Zopound is to, you know, empty their guns. Everybody that's in the car has to empty their guns. Frank has an idea about a possible route into the Zopound through an ex-gang member called Bulldog. 
Bulldog has made a name for himself in Miami after appearing in a number of low-budget feature films. Ah, yes. Here's our boy. Bulldog. He'll get you the Zopound for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up. Presenting to you from around the world. The ghetto president, Bulldog. I'm the ghetto president every city. I represent my president's stop arguments. Bulldog has agreed to meet me, but there's a catch. He wants to do it in the heart of little Haiti, and I've been told to come alone. Here the streets are run by numerous Haitian gangs, the Zo Pound being the most feared and dominant. This area is rife with unemployment and the perfect place for gang culture to flourish. It's disconcerting to think that I'm only 10 minutes away from the affluent tourist strip of South Beach. The Chef Creole restaurant is a focal point for the community here, serving traditional Haitian food. Bulldog, yeah. Mac, everyone calls him, it's Donald, everyone calls him Mac, how you doing? All right, Mac. How you doing? Hi, Mac, I'm Keela. Keela, how you doing? Yes. Hey. How you doing, man? Hey, hey, hey so good to see you. introduction on camera. Huh? Yeah, well, you know. It's all good. Hey, you, you know, you're my passport, you know, into this world. Yeah, I'm like the ghetto president, they call me, you know? I was real wild in the streets, you know, bullet holes everywhere. Yeah. Where? Here, here. Went in here, come out back here. I, wanna, I was under my legs, I was paralyzed for six months. You know, the guys were shooting at you, how are they doing? Are they still alive? They're not doing that good, you know? Yeah, I mean, without incriminating yourself, you know, are they breathing oxygen or are they, I don't, are they taking know, nitrogen? Yeah, what are they doing? I mean, it's a long time ago though, you know? All of God got dealt with. You have to earn your respect on these streets. Well, that's, um, that's a bulldog and, uh, you know, see whether he kind of opens the door for us into this whole world of uh, Zo Pound. Yo, Blind, it's Bulldog, man. I got a film crew here, man, from the UK. I'm trying to bring him to Zo Pound, man. I need you to open some doors for me to get to the Zo Pound. All right? So I'm going to meet you in a little bit, and then we'll do some introductions from me, all right? I want you to bring, you know, um... <laughs> Bulldog tells me to follow him to an undisclosed location. Road's blocked with a police car up here. But that guy more or less said, I'm a killer. And this story about Zopan is more uh, complex than the amount of bodies and the amount of drugs that they've shifted over the years. I hope this gang will give me an insight into how the city's drug economy works. Hardly driving, and more prowling. And uh, he's waving at people he knows, and he's making his presence felt. And um, his presence means that our presence isn't a threat to anybody. So that man's our passport, and also he's our safety net. In a quiet back street in Little Haiti, we wait. Some members of the Zo Pound will come and find us. What are they doing? You already know. Just blind. Suddenly, the Zo Pound appear almost out of nowhere, and they keep coming. I hadn't expected to see them in such numbers. These guys have earned their reputation as one of Miami's most violent gangs by using deadly force to control this neighborhood. Prime real estate for lucrative drug dealing. I was soon about to see for myself why this gang is so feared. Why would you want to torture me? Color your eyes. Yeah. I might don't like the way you look. I might yeah. not like the way you smell today. Yeah. I'm just an angry motherfucker. I'm in Miami investigating the deadly drugs trade, a black market economy that has helped to build this city into a glamorous world destination. I've gone to Little Haiti, 
only a 10 minute drive north from Miami's iconic beaches. But here, the city has a very different feel. My contact bulldog has brought me face to face with Zoe Pound. The latest in a long line of immigrants who have arrived in the city chasing the American dream through violence. So do the, do the police come around by here all the time looking for you guys? They're giving you guys a hassle? Yeah, they come over here trying to hassle us, period, point blank. This is the hood, man. They fucks with us every day, man. I've been getting texts all day. Where is the money to be made? Is it dealing inside the community with the crackheads, the Hispanics, dealing with the Jamaica? Or, or, business is being conducted on all levels, all types of people of all walks of life. Business is business. So when I say business is business, for all the people that understand that, you understand business is business. Evidence of recent drive-bys are apparent when some gang members patrolling the area arrive. ZP for life, sir. It's real? That's real, little sir. Bullet holes, sir. Top of bullets, sir. ZP, baby. AK-47, live, sir. The hot boy. Go ahead and let the people know what happened to happen. Uh, around here, man, you can easily get click clack. Ain't no coming back from that. Now, you've, you've been in the war. Uh, you don't mind me asking about the scars there. Well, this happened before I got with the family. This happened when I was young. I don't want my son being 15 and have to endure what I endure. This here, I was in a wheelchair. My mom cried days and nights. And I had to witness my homeboy's mama crying by never ever seeing their children again. So I wouldn't want that for mine. You take me here. You see this here? You live by it, you're gonna die by it. I don't need my child living and dying by this. You feel me? Plain and simple. You live by it, you're gonna die by it. I don't need my child living and dying by that. That's the choice I made, and trust me, that's a choice sometimes I go to bed with, can't sleep about sometimes because I got a conscience like any other man has a conscience. With the evolution of Zopan ain't gonna be where it started off. We started off as gangsters, but we ain't gonna end it up as gangsters. But at the same time, no crosses, because you will get fucked up. Hi there, Mac. I'm introduced to another gang member who has turned up with his son. And what's Zopan about? Killing pussies. Yeah. All I do is kill. That's all I know how to do. Eat, sleep, shit, and kill. Really? Simple. I do what I do best. And is that, is that you, obviously for business? You're not just doing it for kicks. For pleasure. You're not doing it for just for pleasure. For pleasure. Do I believe that? I take pleasure in the torturing motherfuckers. Really? Yes, I would take pleasure in getting it out right now and torturing you if I could. Why, why would you want to torture me? The color your eyes. Yeah. I might don't like the way you look. I might yeah. not like the way you smell today. How many do you think you've, you've uh, taken down over the years, if you don't mind me asking? I lost count. By the time I turned 21, I lost count. Personally, I like to use my knife. I like to be personal with it. It's nothing, it's nothing, more, it's nothing more exciting than watching the person take their last breath. You know, the look in their eyes when they realize their life is over. And this is your son here, is this it? This is my son. And you don't mind to hear him? Does he know about your lifestyle? He know what I do. And, and what do you want for him? Would you mind if he followed in your footsteps or do you want something different for him? I prefer a better life for him. That's yeah. what I do what I do. So he can have a better life. Yeah. I feel if I exterminate enough of you pussies out there, by the time he grow up, he won't have no problems. Yeah. I'm just an angry motherfucker. Angry. Well, it's hard to get a sense that uh, uh, Zoe Pound is just a gang or a drug dealing business. It seems to have a, a huge amount of support right across the community here in Little Haiti. You know, and here these are, you know, uh, some of the senior figures in the community, you know. And one of the guys just showed me blind, showed me a gun, and that's five to ten years. And I think they're pretty open about their street activities, which is about drugs and everything associated with that. That's murders, killings, and uh, revenge and retribution. Do you know what? Some of them are scary fucking motherfuckers. I noticed a t-shirt being worn proudly by a gang member, and I was about to find out who's pulling the strings. You're gonna tell me who this is? This man, Clo. Yeah. This is a this is a top man, isn't it? Yeah, a good man. Yeah. You know. And where is he now? A lockdown. Lockdown, yeah. He's in jail. 
I'm told Makazo, the gang's leader, has been charged with four counts of murder. To understand what makes this gang so ruthless on the streets of Miami, it's important to understand where they've come from. These are the streets of Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince, one of the most dangerous places on Earth. This is where the Zopound were forged. Ever since the Haitians freed themselves from slavery and gained their independence over 200 years ago, the country has been in a constant state of chaos and violent unrest. In September 1991, thousands of Haitians were killed in vicious street battles after the country's newly elected president was overthrown. It was a ferocious and bloody coup, causing a mass exodus of refugees seeking asylum in the US. They were not welcome. Those that did get into the country bound together and settled in what was to become known as Little Haiti. Blind has decided he wants to show me a different side of Haitian culture, away from the gangs. He wants to take me to meet his mother-in-law, a voodoo priestess. The Miami 54th Street is the, like the first place you come to in Miami, if you hate Little Haiti 54th Street. Voodoo is in, in, embedded in Haitian culture. I don't practice it, but it's part of my culture, man. Looking around, it seems that voodoo and Christianity have merged to become one religion. How important is it here, you know, that it's the voodoo, a the voodoo? It's very important to us, especially the Haitian people. And what does it mean? Is it kind of the spirit within the, the Haitian community is it's voodoo? It's it? very strong. Now, you're, you're a voodoo priestess, would that be yes. fair enough? Okay, now that's just, it seems to me, you must carry a lot of stress, because if you're trying to take a lot of pain from other people, that's it's right. got to go somewhere. They're go not me. I do not take it. My spirit take it. My spirit do the work, not me. Because and if there was for me, how you think I could do a work like that? I have to call my spirit first to do the work. So what can you do? You can heal, you can nurture, can you...? Me, I do everything. Only thing I don't do, I do not kill people. Okay. And Anybody who's sick, they're welcome. So if we want to get a voodoo blessing, a sense from you, you can... Do it for you? Do for me. Yes. It's not that bad on it, you see? So you could smell it. It's very strong, but it's good. It's obviously been decided that everyone could do with a good look top up. And I can see why. When you live on the mean streets of Little Haiti, you're going to need all the luck you can get. That's my girlfriend. That's your girlfriend? My $86 voodoo good luck charm. The uh, spell has been cast. But you know what? It's, um, I do feel uplifted. Real or imaginary, in my head or in the spirit world, I don't know, it makes me feel good. For a moment, I have to remind myself that I'm still in Miami. Prayers go up, blessings come down. Back amongst the tourists in South Beach, it's hard to imagine that the Zo Pound are only 10 minutes up the road. But this short journey makes me think that there are two cities within Miami, and I wanted to understand how the two worlds came together. Were visitors to Miami inadvertently mixing with gangs like Zo Pound by looking for a good time amongst the bars and clubs of South Beach? I mean, Miami Beach is, a, is an interesting place because you'll see a little bit of everything, um, from the street level stuff to the, the high-end nightclub, you know, designer party drugs. You'll never have a club where nobody's uh, doing drugs. It, it's not possible. You'll have some dope peddlers that'll come over, they'll take the bus or they'll drive over from some of the areas on the mainland like Little Haiti and they'll, they'll end up here and they'll sell their marijuana and their cocaine and stuff uh, 
uh, street level sales to people here in South Beach. I think that's the whole reason a lot of these clubs exist is because of coke and meth. That's the drug people are gonna be on and they're gonna be awake and they wanna party. Back with the Zoe Pound. Bulldog's been in contact. He tells me the gang are keen to show me what life is like when they're selling drugs on the street. They insist I must meet them tonight. My rendezvous is outside an unlikely English pub in the middle of Little Haiti called Churchill's. And to my surprise, I find an unexpected friendly face in the form of the local doorman. You don't mind me saying it's a bit bizarre to hear an English accent in the middle of kind of little Haiti. When I first started here, the first six months here, I'll be honest, I was scared as shit. I'd be sitting here like this, cars would pull up with tinted windows, and I'd be thinking about it, like, God, you know, they could roll a window and down. Because we've been with some of the Zopan lot, and yeah. let me tell you, they're packing. Yeah. But, I, no, mean, I, I, I mean, they're carrying, right? Every now and again, like I said, it will go off wherever it's just a shooting, shots fired. A lot of it is what I call territory. We have a nice car park here, they're trying to muscle in on the car park, charging the people a dollar or two. I live in the hood. I live just a few blocks up the street. Hey. Even when I drive home, even though I know people know me, I'm always, like, I've got my key ready to go in my gate. Once I'm in my gate, I feel safe, but I'm always alert. Chris's views on Little Haiti only reinforce the sense of tension I feel in this neighborhood. It's not long until I get the call I've been waiting for. We've been dragged to the back streets of Little Haiti. It's their part of the hood, it's their part of the world, and I don't know what's going to go on. But they're keen to bring us to a house, I think, across there, and they're having a big meeting. Uh, I think they're keen just to say that their talk has not been cheap and that they are the real deal. You know, I mean, the casualties on these streets tell us they're the real deal. The rest of the drug dealers and ex-drug dealers in this town tell us they're the real deal, and they're keen to let us know. But what we're going to see and what's going to happen, I don't know. Bulldog appears. I don't want to put y'all in there, okay? I mean, to the point Bulldog's not comfortable with the situation. He doesn't think it's safe for us to go inside. But this is what I've come for, and I'm not keen to turn back now. Hi, buddy. No one's going to be seen. We're not going to show any faces. There has been a change of mind. They don't want us to enter. Bulldog seems tense as we return to the car. But out of the darkness, J-Dog, a gang member I'd met earlier in the day, approaches. He has some new instructions. To take me to an unknown destination. While we're traveling, I take the opportunity to ask him about the Zoe Pound's leader, Makazo. You know, what makes him so special? I mean, he's just a guy that just don't give a fuck. Um, he's 100% Jico. Jico, what's that mean? Gangster. Gangster. Yeah. You know, I mean, all the boys 100% gangster. There's, you know, there's no flawed, flawed niggas in our camp, I can say. You know, because everybody keep it gangster and keep it 100, 100% gangster all day, every day. And does that mean sticking together and having no fear? Sticking together, having no fear, getting money. I mean, all around the board. What makes what makes you gangster is what you do and how you do what you do. You know what I'm saying? So, Magazo, he's doing his time, and you know, with no pressure on his back, he's just doing it. You know. I'm not sure what kind of place I've been brought to. Even Bulldog is on edge. It's an alpha I overhear one of the gang members talking on the phone to Makazo. Whatever they have planned, it seems it has to be run past their leader for him to endorse from his own prison cell. Some of the Zopan foot soldiers have agreed to meet with me. A quick glance tells me these guys are different from the other gang members I've met so far. These are the guys that sell dope directly onto the streets and have to protect their patch with the barrel of a gun. But needless to say, they wouldn't tell me any details of that evening's operation. So guys, Zopan, what does it mean to you? Is it a political movement or is it just a family? I mean, tell me what it means to you. 360, good, good answer. So what does it mean to you, for you, Zopan, you know? What it means to me? It means life. Without Zopan, it would have been no name for nobody in my but for the Zos at all. For you, Zopan. It brought unity for us. It was a, it was a time where Haitians couldn't even walk these streets. 
You feel me? For you to walk these streets, you have to have balls and you have to represent where you're from. Without representing where you're from, you ain't shit. You feel me? So we had to come up with a click. You know what I'm saying? They came up with a click, Zopa. A couple of areas, we had to go in and do what we do. You feel me? Because without respect, you ain't shit. You feel me? And I hear a lot of people say, hey, you know, respect don't make a man and this and that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I tell you what, you figure it out. Done. Without Zopa, <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. I mean, it's like that. You feel what I'm saying? So, yeah. If you carry a gun, it seems to me, in this neighborhood, you have to either kill or be prepared to kill. Be prepared to kill. Okay, is that true? If you carry a gun in this town, on this block, you have to be prepared to kill. Prepared to kill. Are each of you prepared to kill? Prepared to kill. Yeah. Yeah. Have any of you killed? Are you going to say? That's not that. You know what I'm saying? It's not something. It's not something. It's not something. It's not something. But you have, if you're on the block with a gun, you got to be prepared to kill. Yeah. yeah. All day. Just as suddenly as they made their appearance, I'm told my time is up and I have to leave. I've just come out of the meeting with the guys, AK-47s, a Glock, you know. These are guys who have killed. I mean, it's probably, you know, I'm, uh, it's not an hysterical assumption on my behalf. You know, you know, very likely those guys have, you know, body bagged you know, four or five people, maybe much more. You know, I'm there, it feels all cartoon, it feels like a performance art, and, you know, I feel, because I've seen so much of that in, in the movies, I'm thinking I'm seeing another part of a movie set. That's fucking real. They were there tonight, that performance was put on, on the orders by Makazo, and he's the main man, he's the serpent's head, who's locked up. Try and really understand Miami and how a gang like Zo Pound works. I need to get access to Makazo inside his prison cell. But he's serving a double life sentence for murder, so this isn't going to be easy. Miami, a city built on the profits of cocaine and propelled by a constantly shifting underclass of immigrants, all seeking their own slice of the American dream. For many in this underclass, crime and gangs offer the fastest way out of the ghetto. The real heyday of crime in this city was um, in the 80s, when these tourist areas around here were practically no-go areas. Now the police clamped down and moved the crime and, uh, and they dispersed the criminals and the muggers and the drug dealing from this tourist area and it just moved it back into the inner city. The crime hasn't gone away, it's just relocated. I'm here investigating the latest immigrant gang to have stamped its mark on the city. A deadly Haitian gang known as the Zopound. I've learned that they're major players on the distribution side of the drug trade in this city. Last night, I met with some of their foot soldiers, the guys that work the streets and protect their turf. I'm now about to meet their leader, Makazo. Makazo is currently serving a life sentence for four counts of attempted murder and two counts for conspiracy to commit murder. He's appealing these convictions. This is uh, Dade County Prison. This is the pre-trial detention unit. And we're about to meet Makazo, the head of Zopound. Now, we know last night when they put on a show of for force for us that Makazo had arranged that entire um, event here uh, in prison. We're about to meet his lawyer and himself. It's going to be very sensitive because he's facing some serious charges. Makazo has already spent the last six years behind bars. I've been granted an interview on the condition that I meet him in the presence of his lawyer. I'm Mac, how are you doing? I'm Mac too. How are you doing? I'm very well, Mac. Obviously, his lawyer doesn't want Makazo to say anything that would endanger his appeal. As you know, we're over doing a. Um, uh, story about Zopan. First of all, how, how, how's jail? How's jail? It's hard. I mean, but you know, hanging in there. Yeah. It's hell, but you know, yeah. you gotta survive. What does Zopan stand for you? For me, I mean, pride thing to be proud of movement, a cause. You know, that's what we fought for. I mean, I know you got. You know, a lot of things, negative things that they say about Zopan and, and 
for me to sit here and, you know, like I'm a saint or an angel, you know, I'd be fooling myself and fooling y'all, which I'm not, but, I mean, I had my little run-ins or whatever, and, but mainly the movement was more for a cause, fighting for our people and, and just standing for them, you know, just wanting to see them be proud of who they are, you know. But growing up on the streets, what you had to go through, it, it surprises me that so many of your characters are still alive because it's, yeah. sometimes it's a dangerous place there. Yeah, it's a rough life, you know. Wouldn't wish this life on no one. With his appeal looming, I understand that Makazo has to be on his best behavior. But it's difficult for me to marry the man I've just met to the ruthless gangster the police believe he is. Before I leave Miami, I head back to Little Haiti to meet Bulldog. I ask him to fill in the blanks for me. Now, on the subject of Makazo, he's at the top of the tree, he's a god, OG, original gangster. He's in for three attempted murders, any number so of misdemeanors, so they say, right? But anybody who gets it, the, what I hear on the streets, that guy... It's not to be fucked with. Not to be fucked with, of course. Being a, he's a, he's a, nobody gets the top of the tree like that, unless they have a long body count to his name. Lots of... But the notches be, on your gun. But to be realistic, to, to, to be realistic with you, ain't too many fucking people running these streets that don't have a lot of body counts. Macazo is a living legend out here. If it wasn't for Macazo and his generation, man, this Haitian community still be running around here getting kicked in their ass. It's, it's bad being black and poor in America, but being black, Haitian, and poor, there's nothing worse than that, man. For some, the only way to Miami's riches is through the illicit drugs trade. The Haitians are the latest arrivals, and it's their struggle for a market share that's given rise to the murder rate. It's a dangerous world, and the ones at the bottom, the foot soldiers, often pay the ultimate price. But when opportunities are sparse, many feel they have no alternative. Around here, man, you can easily get click clack. Ain't no coming back from that. I came to Miami to investigate why this town has such a spiraling murder rate. But I can't help feeling that Miami's skyline stands testament to the fact that crime does sometimes pay. In this city of exiles, that message does not go unnoticed as everyone looks for a fast track out of the ghetto. This is the gang culture mentality in the USA, and it's not about to change anytime soon.